The Employees Provident Fund posted a gross investment income of $19.29 billion for the first quarter, up 59% year-on-year, despite the ongoing uncertainties caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. In a statement, the EPF said it registered $14.28 billion in equities income for the quarter, accounting for 74% of total gross investment income, while fixed income remained a stable contributor with $3.92 billion ringgit. Income from real estate and infrastructure came in at $710 million, while money market instruments contributed $380 million. EPF CEO Datuk Sri Amir Hamza Azizan says the solid first quarter performance was a spillover from the global economic recovery in the second half of 2020. He adds that the vaccination rollout, as well as supportive fiscal and monetary policies worldwide, will play a key role in facilitating economic activities and growth. The EPF's investment assets stood at $981.7 billion as at end March, with overseas investments accounting Counting for 36% of the total. Meanwhile, on financial relief initiatives amid the pandemic, the EPF says a total of 57.97 billion in ICNA withdrawals were approved for 6.49 million applicants, of which 50.93 billion had been dispersed. Under Isla Starry, a total of 20.8 billion has been paid out to 5.27 million members. Amir Hamza says that while the EPF remains cautious about the coming quarter amid downside risks triggered by concerns over the COVID-19 variants, he assures members that the fund continuously takes the necessary measures to protect members' savings, supported by its strong governance framework. IGM Plantations in Kuala Lumpur Kapong have requested for trading of their shares to be suspended today pending a material announcement. According to the edgemarkets.com, KLK is said to be making an offer to take over IGM Plantations with an option of either a cash offer or a share swap. KLK's pre-suspension share price was 21 ringgit and 76 sen. Quoting sources, the takeover deal is valuing IGM Plantations in the range of 2 ringgit 50 to 2 ringgit 70 per share. IGM Plantations was last traded at at 2 ringgit 46 for a market capitalization of 2.12 billion ringgit. Its substantial shareholders comprise IJM Corp and the Employees Provident Fund. According to its 2020 annual report, IJM Plantations has a total of 60,966 hectares in total planted area, of which 24,898 are located in Malaysia, while 36,068 of that sits in Indonesia. George Kent Malaysia has received the green light from shareholders to design and build a glove manufacturing plant in Lumut Port Industrial Park Pera for some $624 million. In a statement, George Kent says this is expected to expand its glove manufacturing facility construction business locally and internationally in order to cater for strong demand from existing and new glove players wishing to expand capacity in the coming years. According to Bernama, shareholders also approved the group's proposed subscription of a 40% stake in in Dynacare, a wholly owned unit of Johan Holdings for 40 million or one ringgit per share. Chairman Tan Sri Tan Kei Hock says the contract would boost its order book significantly. He adds that this also marks George Kent's entry into the glove manufacturing facility construction space and that the investment in Dynacare would provide an important new recurring and sustainable income stream. The group says the plant would have a production capacity of about 12 billion pieces of gloves per annum, with the first production line expected to start in August. Tan Sri Wanzu Kifliwan Arifin says he respects the decision at ExxonMobil Corp's AGM last week to not reappoint him to the board. The former Petronas chief was among three directors who were not re-elected to the board amid pressure by shareholders led by activist hedge fund Engine No. 1 for ExxonMobil to be better prepared for a carbon zero future. In a statement, Wanzu Kifli said that despite the short duration of his membership, he considers his time on the board to be a valuable experience. Wanzu Kifri also thanked the ExxonMobil board members for their fellowship during his four-month stint with the oil major. Wanzu Kifli was appointed to the board of ExxonMobil on February 2nd this year after the group received criticism that its directors lacked energy experience, according to Reuters. He was the first non-American in the company's history to join the board. Wanzu Kifli joins former MetLife chief Stephen Kandarian and IBM CEO Samuel Palmisano and the board's longest-serving member in exiting the 12-member board.
Ex-PM Datuk Sri Najib Razak stepson Riza Aziz has been named by 1MDB in a 250 million US dollar suit. This comes after the news broke over the weekend that Riza's New York apartment had been sold by the US authorities for 16.8 million US dollars. Aside from 1MDB, three of its subsidiaries also named him and two of his companies, namely Red Granite Pictures and Red Granite Capital, in the suit. The writ of summons also named New York-based firm Sherman and Sterling as the fourth defendant. This is one of the six suits filed by 1MDB in its multi-billion suits against many individuals and companies. In the writ, 1MDB claims that Riza ought to have known that the monies originated from 1MDB were misappropriated to them for their benefit. It also claims that the US-based law firm allowed Riza and fugitive Lotech Joe to use its lawyer accounts to launder a substantial portion of those funds. The 1MDB-related companies are also seeking interest, costs and other relief deemed necessary from all four defendants.